Hello everybody, Chris or Corey Akin here. This is a follow-up to my previous video about how to use the program mid2cl to convert mid files into clanlord notation. This is the this is actually about compression. So uh, as you noticed, um, mid2cl exports uh, just plain old text files just like this one here uh, with no loops or anything. And so this is one of my songs fond memories. If I had it just the way it was with no loops or anything, it's actually 10 parts worth of music, which is impossible to play in game unless you had a couple different people playing together as a duet and then just using pauses to offset when they start. However, using loops, you can crunch it down into something that's actually playable, but the further over you are, the harder it gets, and the more complicated your tune, really, really, the harder it gets. All right, so let's take a look at the one that I had worked on, the one that I had imported. This is uh, the Spring Showers one that I'll, I'll think of a new name for it at some point. Um, so, previously it was all in one big blob of text. Uh, you'll notice that I've actually laid it out with uh, uh, returns, or line breaks, whatever you want to call them. Um, every, well, I consider it every four beats. So, four, here's four P1s, four, four, and four. So this is a total of 16 long. And all these should be about 16 long. And I tried to do the same thing over here. Uh, let's hear how it sounds one more time. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two. Anyway, uh, you can go back to the other video if you really want to listen to the tune or ask me in game, I suppose. Um, what's more important over here is when I lay it out, it's really obvious here that this part is just repeated the whole time. In fact, it's completely unchanged. So theoretically, I could shorten this by taking this one line and repeating it a bunch of times. So let's see how many. We've got one, two, three, uh, let me do this. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So there should be fifteen of these. So the easiest thing to do would be to put a loop around it using parentheses and 15 after that, but of course that doesn't work because you can only have one number after there. Uh, we can still get there easily enough because I remember my times tables. So let's see, 15 is three groups of five. Now if we play this again, it should still line up and then if we listen to it again, this should come in right when the low line stops playing the melody. Let's give it a try. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, I think, eleven, twelve, thirteen, 14? 15? And it lined up perfectly. No problem at all. So I could do the same thing down here if I wanted to. Uh, 2, 3, 4, 5. Or if I wanted to get really fancy and I was desperately short on space, I could actually do something clever. See, this is a group of 5. We do 3 times. This is actually another group of five down here. Oh, except for this bottom part down here. Never mind, that won't work. Uh, if that was the same, we could actually have another group of five down here like this. So let's just for a second pretend that this is actually this. It isn't really, but let's just pretend it is. Okay, so we've got another group of five. Uh, if I wanted to, I could shorten it and make it look like this. Or if I want to, see we've got a group of five repeated three times, and it happens down here, which will be a total of four times. We can use multiple endings to sort of cheat. I can say, okay, after the third time through this, um, after the third time through, that's what this means, you play this. And then after that's done, I'm going to put a 4. What that means is it plays this part 
three times, then it plays all of this, and then it plays that. So far, so good. All right. Um, so that principle is basically what we're working on here. Um, cutting out characters by using repeats. And by using these multiple endings, you can have a repeat that isn't quite a perfect repeat. All right, let's put this back because this actually should be right. Um, actually, here, let's do it here. So we've got this. It's almost the same until here. So what we can do is say, this time is the same, that 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 time's different. That's the fifth time. So what we'll do is we'll put in an exclamation mark here, which means this is the default ending. Every single loop, unless we specify something differently, that's what's going to happen. So if I did that, and just get rid of it, if I did that, it'll play this whole thing five times, and that's what's going to happen every time. But that's not what we want to happen. We want this to happen the fifth time through. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this out. I'm going to pop it in here. Ending five, so that means it'll happen. This will happen one to four, and then the fifth time, because it's specified, we'll do that. If I wanted to get, if I was desperately short, I could actually take out those two middle octave signs and put it in the middle. Sorry about that, I unplugged my microphone and my headphones, weird. Okay, um, I might have to go back and mute that part out. Okay, anyway, so we've got this here. Now that we've got that here, we can get rid of that, and that should be the same. So one more time, we took this, we, so I mean, there's an easy way to do that would be to just do that. Four, four and four of exact same thing, that works perfectly fine. If you really, really need to scrape for extra characters, you can cut out this part because it's the same as here. Say this is the default ending, which happens almost every time. But on the fifth time through, we do that instead. And then just get rid of all the stuff that you did differently. Yeah, cool. Um, I'll show you another way to do it up here as well. Same thing. Um, so this time, each of these chords are different, but what happens in between is the same. So we could theoretically repeat this. The first time through, that's the ending. The second time through, that's the ending. The third time through, that's the ending. The fourth time through, we're not going to put anything after that, so it will play nothing. It'll just go straight onto the other line. So one more time, it'll play that, start looping here. First time through, it'll play that and that. Second time through, it'll play only this and that. Third time through, it'll play that and that. Sorry, I'm wrapping my head around this because it's not entirely clear. Um, but you, you have to understand that again. So this chord is happening at the start here. That chord happens at the start of the second line because it's at the end of the first line. This one happens at the start of the third line because it's at the end of the second line. That one starts at the beginning of the fourth time through because it's at the end of the third time through. It's very confusing, um, but you really, really have to understand it. Same thing down here. I don't want to repeat this one, so the repeat starts after it. I'm repeating just this, and I don't want to put the end repeat sign here because it would just repeat that forever and ever and ever without, or without anything else. I want to add this part in at the end of the first line. I want to add this part, next part in at the end of the second line. I want to add this part in at the end, oh, at the end of the third line. And then we just have to remember to repeat this the fourth time through so that this D can play over another copy of this. You with me so far? Okay, let me show you 
what it looks like on a more complicated scale. Well, no, actually, let's try playing this and make sure everything lines up. All right, this is how it's going to sound. Two, three, four, five. Second time through first. Two, three, four, five. Third time through one. Two, three, four, five. Onto here. All right, you with me? All right, here, let's um, just do this. I'll just copy an extra one over here so that we have a little bit of lead into it. If you watch what lines up or what lights up here, it makes it a little bit more clear. Let's watch this one more time. And just this part, watch when these things light up. Oh, what do you mean chord missing its end mark? There we go. So you can see it's going through there. Um, it's a little bit hard to tell when these things go. Let's try it one more time. We'll slow it down to here. Um. Okay, with me? Again, that's the, the basic gist to it. What happens when things get a little bit more complicated? Um, Honestly, you sort of have to start messing around in a text editor and using find and replace. So for this one, I did all sorts of crazy stuff. You'll notice that this right here is a huge loop that actually repeats all the way down to there. So that gets played through twice. Once before that, once before that. So I managed to cut off an entire, set, like half of, I wouldn't say half, but like a whole chunk of things by repeating that. Uh, take a look over here. What can we do easily enough? So we're gonna repeat that. This part here, uh, actually, let's just go straight into text edit. Come on over here. Um, it's so much easier when things are colored. If you're trying to do this with just plain text all in black, it's miserable, trust me. All right, um, again, first off, there's some simple things we can do. Um, this is very complicated. There's lots of different things going on here. There's very few things that are repeated exactly the same within parts, but the structure overall gives you uh, some repetition. Let me just check the time. All right. I'm going to try and play through this here. I would like to give you an opportunity. If you want to challenge yourself, look away, try and write down what you think the structure is. What sections come back, what sections repeat. If, however, um, you're not really sure about this and you just want me to see the answers, take a look here, it's labeled for you. All right, let's give it a shot. This is how it sounds. So this particular one comes back later, but we'll see. So the thing to listen for is exact repetitions and close, but not quite.
Is this exactly the same as before or different? So lots of really good things going on with this piece. I really liked it. It turned out super well, but it was way, way, way too long. All right. Uh, so this is the way I think about the structure. Phrase A, first time through. This is sort of just the, the basic intro. No melody on top of it. It's just the riff. Here's uh, the B section. Um, and then, sorry, one time through, second time through. Similar but it does change there. Anyway, so similarly, here's where the melody comes back, second time through the melody, and then things start changing here. C is the sort of entirely different part, then the beginning part comes back, we have the same part, or the same sec second theme, and then we have the sort of main theme that happens here, and then again, around here is where things change and it goes into an entirely different section down here, D. Um, down here, this comes back again. I hope that you heard that it was different because the highest note is now in octaves. This is a tiny change, but it sounds very important. See, there's no, nothing in the high octave over here. Here we have the high D, F, or high D and A. And again, sounds very important. Because it's different, we can't use the exact change, exact repetition. We can't use loops there. So, uh, this is the compressed version over here, which has a lot. I'm just going to try and go through it and explain what I can in before, as, as much as I remember how, because I did this like half a year ago. Okay, uh, so you can see over here, pretty straightforward. First off, right up here, um, there's no repetitions here. There's basically nothing we could do. I guess technically we could do this part up to there and repeat it here. Um, I didn't need those last few characters, so I didn't need it, but it's something we could do. So yeah. Um, do we want to? Sure, why not? No, we'll do it down here. Okay, so we'll leave that it is code, it matches over there. Okay, here, this is exactly the same as the line above it. Exactly the same. So we can just, nice and easy, bam. we cut down half the characters there. Piece of cake. Um, Let's same thing down here, and let's take a look. Um, where does it stop being the same? Let's find out. I'm going to copy you and throw you into text edit. Let's do a new window here. Okay. Copy, find, paste, delete. Delete, 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 delete. This is sort of the brute force method, but it still works. Keep going, keep going. No repetitions, no repetitions. Hey! See that pop up there? These two parts are exactly the same. So if we want to, which we do, we can say, okay, first ending here. You put the first ending after the part you want to loop, you put your opening loop right before the start of what you're searching for, basically. So this is what we were finding. This is what was duplicated. This is what we're going to get rid of down here. So loop ends before, loop beginning before it, first ending here. Down here, it only happens once more. I'm just going to replace that with end loop two. What that does is we're playing this once through here. We go through here at the end of the first loop. Here's where it bounces back, plays this part again, and then because there's no second ending, it just skips right on. This is how it happens. Here's how it sounds. Uh, we'll put it at the proper tempo as well. See, that goes. And here it comes again.
So one thing to be aware of, uh, back in this one, I did all my loops for full lines. Once you are really scrabbling to get those last few characters in, you actually can cut them wherever you want to and wherever makes the most sense. Um, with this piece, I did reach the point where I had to start cutting out details or musical elements because I really wanted, or because I just didn't have space. So it became sort of a fight to figure out where I could keep my, what I could keep and what I absolutely had to get rid of. So in this case, for the main theme, um, yeah, I'll just pop you in here and let's see how it sounds. I'll put a pause first so it doesn't sound weird. Here we go. So listen to this part. Listen uh, where it comes back again. Did you hear the the beginning was different? The beginning was different, so theoretically we can't do a loop here. Except that we have to, and we can, because this line is the same as this one. So what I did is I made a ending, first ending, that has the first part of the second verse, or if you want to say, or the second phrase. Going back over here, let us take this part like that maybe sure we'll search for it again oh sorry <clears throat> copy paste all right and then just um obviously if you're writing it you'll know where which repeats oh i missed a few uh which parts repeat and which parts don't so here eight so one of them has eight one of them has nine I don't know if that really matters, but you know what? I'm going to assume I knew what I was doing, so I'm going to do that. So we can take this whole thing and do exactly what we did before. So go to the beginning of it, open bracket, go to the end of the first instance of what you're trying to replace, first ending. Go find the second part of it, Delete the entire thing and replace it with the end of the loop. Let's plug it in and see how it sounds. This part shouldn't be changed. Yep. Let's hear how the second part goes. Look for where it loops back. So this allows a really nice musical thing, which is when you're repeating a phrase, having the beginning be a little bit different. Um, if the middle of the phrase is changed, there's no way you can use this. It's just, um, I don't know if you'll be able to really save characters by messing around with it. But if the ending is different, it's pretty straightforward. If the beginning is different, this is a tool you can use. Um, beyond that, it just becomes a matter of being uh, as clever as you can, trying to figure out what is exactly the same and what is close but not quite. So if you take a look over here, um, I'm not going to go through much else of this because more it's basically just the same thing. Um, uh, are there any other things I really wanted to point out while we were here? Um, there was one thing. Yeah, here at the beginning of C2. Let's hear how this guy sounds. So again, when you're desperately scrabbling for things, uh, you have to find whatever you can. Take a look at these two lines. Actually, we'll do it down here. It's basically the same, but you know, we'll stick down here. We have two things that are almost exactly the same. The only difference here is that. So what we do is, uh, I'm not even going to do the find and replace because this one is obvious to me, and hopefully you should know what we're about to do. Find the part that gets repeated, put that beforehand, first ending, 
take the entire part that you're replacing, or the second time through, place it with times two. We got that. Exact same thing down here. I don't know. I honestly have forgotten. I'm going backwards because I've done this once already. And let's see what we get. So this is, I believe, exactly the same. I'll have to listen to it. That's always the easiest way to figure it out. Yep, so we can just cut this entire thing. Two, two. So look how small that is compared to where it started. Um, when you're desperately scrabbling and you're like 400 characters over, you need to find big chunks you can pop out like that. When you're down to your last 50 or so, it's a lot easier. Um, M-Tooth is really nice because it does have that export function. Um, if you don't have M-Tooth working, there are ways around it, or you can just use a character counter. At the end of the day, though, um, it's, you know, you sort of have to do what you need to do in order to make it fit. There was one song, uh, The Road of Trials, I had to cut out a bunch of counter melodies uh, in order to make it fit. And at this point, I'm actually really not happy with it. Um, do what you need to to make your songs run, but um, but if you have to cut out so much that it's making you unhappy or it's just not... Um, you're feeling creatively limited or it's bothering your creativity, that's when you might actually need to go back and recompose something and just say, this just won't work. I need to do it differently. Or you can do what I did with one other piece and just, you know, make it into a duet and just have one, <laughs> one instrument start halfway through and the other one. So one instrument plays the first half, the other instrument play the, plays the second half. Anyway, let's play this through. It's going to be another... Uh, three minutes, and it's almost 30 minutes. Well, whatever. Uh, see if you can follow through where the repeats happen. You should be able to at this point, and if not, then just maybe go through it slowly and see what you can do. All right, here we go. One last time through fond memories. So I could theoretically have uh, done that part as a loop, but uh, didn't need to this time. First ending. Second time through, second ending, or no second ending, just moving on. See where the loop starts? Into the first ending, which also contains the intro to the second part, the second phrase. This is the second ending, quote unquote. Oh. Now we're out of this first big loop into the first sort of middle part. Same thing we did over here. No opportunities to take things out here, but see how we went all the way back up here? Originally, I had thought maybe I wouldn't do this exactly the same, but due to time uh, or character limits, I didn't have any opportunity to vary it. It had to be exactly the same or it just wouldn't fit. Plus, you know, it's a good excuse to play this part that I like a second time through to make sure everyone remembers it. <laughs> That part, I really like that I found that part. It took me a while to figure out I could do it that way, and it helps. Okay, second ending down here. See, exactly the same thing we did before. Now this is a loop that has a different octave the second time through. You can do that too by being careful about where you put your octave markers, or using plus instead of equals. So we're back to this section, but since this is the varied one, it can't be, I can't go back. I had to write it out again in full. And there's no opportunities for repeats here. It's just too big. 
Uh, I guess maybe I could, you know. And again, that one, I originally had a loop back to the beginning, but... I'll tell you in a second. Okay, so the last thing I want to say is, why did I write this part out again at the beginning, or at the end, when I was so short on characters? If you go all the way back up here, this part was part of a bigger loop. This part was used all the way down to there, and if I didn't do that there, I would have had to put that here. I would have had to write it out a second time there or something else. Or if I wanted to use this again, I would have to go loop all the way back to here, but only there. And you can't cut off... Um, sorry, loops with multiple endings have to be cont like totally nested within larger loops. So since if I really wanted to try and go back and do this instead, like loop back to here and use that, I would have had to do, you know, first ending there, and then the loop would go there, and then this would go down here, which means that this part down here couldn't use this whole thing. It would be, um, it ended up actually being um, worse on characters, trying to do it that way. The part that made the most sense was to do this whole thing, and then just plug this in down here again in full. And, I mean, that's what it comes down to. This is sort of, uh, you have to be, like, a little bit of an artist, I guess. I don't know. Or just super clever trying to figure out which exactly gets you the most. Um, unless you're way over, you can, you don't have to be perfect. I mean, like I said, there was this part I could have done. Theoretically, I probably could have taken, oh, nope, sorry, that's part of a loop here, so I can't use it here. And then that's, no, that, that's the second ending there, so I can't do that one again. See how it gets a little bit tricky? So... I would have had to do that, and then that would be that whole thing, but I would have had to write it out twice or use... Anyway, point is, if you work hard and you're clever about it, you can cut down a piece an enormous amount. You can have long pieces, even if they're pretty complicated like this. I mean, by long, I mean three minutes, but still, for Clan Lore, that's not bad. If you don't have access to a program like MTooth, it gets a lot harder, because you have to actually test things in-game. Which, you know, is certainly possible, but um, I like the fact that, you know, things are, co are color-coded, and you can sort of follow along. So if something sounds almost right but not quite, you can figure it out, or it shows you where it is. Or if there's, especially if while you're doing your loops you messed something up and dropped a beat, which has happened to me many, many times, just in the last two days while I was trying to do other things. Um... Start with the simple ones, is what I'd say. Start with looking for direct repetitions you can do, then go for the very simple ones where you're just adding first ending and then just the end of a two times through. And if you do that and it works, it's generally pretty straightforward. And you have an undo chain to back up if something bad happens. And then once you get more comfortable with it, you can do more challenging things. Uh, give it, So yeah, give it a try. Uh, if you have any questions about this, definitely shoot me a message in game or an email or on the bar discord. Yeah. Um, it's actually a lot of fun. Um, it's almost like a puzzle sometimes. It's really infuriating when it doesn't work. And one thing you have to be very careful for is uh, tempo change during chord issues. When you're doing these loops, sometimes it's easy to forget. Say I have this chord here and I look at it and it goes over here. So, oh, that's fine. There's no tempo change here. But what if there's a tempo change down here? Suddenly, this one is holding over and that tempo change lands at the same time and it doesn't work anymore. Uh, that is one thing you have to be very careful for and will be the bane of your existence um, <laughs> until you track down every single last one of them. Uh, if you ever see me during a concert raging about uh, tempo change during chords, uh, it's most likely because I've had to do something like this and missed one of those transitions. But, you know, I've gotten pretty good at finding them after doing it way too many times. Anyway, that's it for today. Uh, have fun, and I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. All right, bye.